Okay, everyone. Uh, hello, welcome. Thank you for watching the video. I am about to install the Spectre Performance. Well, I would call it cold air intake, but anybody knows performance knows it once you take the air box out. It's no longer cold air intake. Anybody who does this, any, anybody that knows better at least, they're doing it for sound, and that's exactly why I'm doing this, to bring out that turbo sound a little bit more to life. I got this kit because it comes with several different adapter sizes. So it comes with the three, three and a half, as well as four inches for intake tubes, just in case. From what I understand that the 2022 Santa Cruz, which is my vehicle that I'm working on right now, has somewhere in between a three and three and a half inch intake, but the three and a half is supposed to work. But just in case it's a little too loose, I can give the uh, three a try. And uh, if that's not the case, then I'll just have to get an adapter. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to it and see how this works out. First, we're going to begin by taking off these pins right here. Um, if you want to try with your fingers, you can. If you have a kit to be able to pry these off, I suggest doing that. So use this little tool right here, pop these off. These little kits are like 15 bucks on Amazon. Just pop those pins off. Uh, excuse the mess in the garage. And now this just comes right off super easily. I'm actually going to put that back in though. Uh, now from here, you're going to have these uh, two hexes, which I'm going to pull those off. One here and one back in here. I don't know if you can see that, but right in there, let's see if I can get a light. Right here, this guy. Should be 10 millimeters, so give that a shot real quick. It is in fact 10 millimeters. Get that mostly loose. Then take this guy. And then just do it by hand from there. Okay, add this to the pile. Same thing with this one. Little tight in there. Uh, I don't have an extension for my socket that's long enough to reach down there, which is very annoying. And I'm actually going to leave that there for a second while I get this one done. All right. This one, I can use my awesome tool. This is my favorite tool. And then there should be another one on the other side of this. Uh, yep, it's on the back side. That one's going to be a bit of a doozy to get to. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this off completely. Then I'll undo it. Uh, take the mass or the mass airflow sensor. So I'll take that off here. Should be another 10 mil. And if I take this off and this off, then what it'll do is it'll allow me to take the last 10 millimeter 
off the back of this without having to fight myself the whole time because right now it is being a pain. I can't really get to it. screw off pull this guy off and always be careful with your mass airflow when you're pulling it out not to hit the sensor itself because you can damage it inside there well this is actually pretty well protected the last one I had was not so well protected there we go this is 10 millimeters as well Yes, it is. Perfect. This one should be pretty quick and easy. Get it nice and loose to where it can wiggle. And then it should pop right off. Oh, actually, forgot a step. I need to take this thing off completely forgot. That is out the filter or the stock filter body is out put that down right there and well, now I'm going to use this opportunity with the more space that I have to go ahead and get this thing off You have to have this piece still where the mass airflow sensor attaches, otherwise you're going to throw a code in your car and then it's not going to drive like it's supposed to. So you can take this off because that's not going to stay on there anymore. And then put this back on. up just so doesn't need to be super tight but tight enough this thing gets like 87 foot pounds so you have to be careful using it uh, this AC Delco ratchet all right and then now it's time to get the math back in Oh. Man, that was a pain to get threaded. finger tight and then we'll do like a I don't know, call it like a half turn on here well, maybe a quarter turn because that's pretty tight okay now let's open this guy up give you a sort of unboxing and this thing is rather large oh my god it's a lot bigger than the K&N, that's for sure. All right. 
So I believe these are inserts. Yep. And I believe that's the largest one. So that would mean this is going to be four inches. Yep. So each one of these rubber gaskets in here is like the circumference change. So this is the smallest one, three inches, and that's way too small. Pull this guy out. That is the uh, three and a half, and uh, the larger one uh, circumference out here is the four inch. So let's see how well this fits. Mm, it's a little big. Hopefully, we can squeeze it down, which it does feel like it will do. And it will fit in here with plenty of space. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is pre-tighten this just to get it to the point where it's not slipping all over the place. Oh, that is not 10 mil. Okay. So this is smaller. That's annoying. Dear car manufacturers and part manufacturers, make everything 10 millimeters. Always make it 10 millimeters. All right. So it's an 8 millimeter, but it does have a Phillips and flathead screw. So what I am going to do is face this in a way to where it's easier access. So if I have it faced up like this, then taking it on and off will make it a, bunch, a whole lot easier. Let's get this thing cranked up. All right. Okay, that's on there pretty good now. So three and a half did ultimately work. It just took some love and it's on there pretty good. It's about as on there as good as it needs to be. All right, so now what I'm going to do, uh, like I said, I was going to put the, uh, the RAM error flow back in, and I know it's going to make contact. The reason being, I guess I really don't need to. Um, what I was planning on is that if this didn't hit, which it does, and I don't like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to put it back in. It'll fit if I force it. I just don't want to do that. I'll, I'd rather use it free-flowing. So it doesn't get dented or broken or anything. Anyway, the point was that uh, I wanted the air to be redirected over it. So if this was shorter, and then the re the clean air, cool air could get redirected over it, it would help uh, rectify some of that uh, quote unquote hot air um, that is coming into the engine bay via the motor itself being hot. But this uh, this airflow it looks pretty direct that it's going to come in and right over this so as it intakes it, it should get, be getting clean and cool air um, and help uh, cool down the engine bay a little bit more anyway. So what I am going to do in the interest of preserving them and not losing them is I am going to put these back in. They just pop back in so they'll be a little bit loose but they'll be locked so they should not fall out. Okay, and uh, that's that. So now I am going to test it out, see how it sounds. Um, and always keep the original parts, uh, depending on the state at least. When you do your emissions testings or anything like that, putting everything back to stock makes it so that way you, uh, you don't fail any kind of inspection. I'm in Florida, so we don't do inspections. However, some dealerships, manufacturers, you take it in to get the vehicle serviced under warranty or anything like that, uh, or any of the protection plans, oil changes, whatever, 
when they come and check the vehicle, if they see you've done any modifications, they may void any kind of program that you're in to uh, protect the car. So always return to stock when you get the opportunity before you take it in to get your oil changes or anything like that. Let's start her up, see how she sounds. Still the same old quiet car as it always was. Put it in neutral, parking brake on. Oh, yeah, that sounds way better. Yeah, way, way better. Definitely hear the intake a lot more. Oh yeah. Sounds way better. Not sure if you can hear this on the camera, but it sounds way better. Doing this before, there was pretty much no sound, pretty muted, pretty dull, which is fine for everyday use, but if you know, you're more of a car enthusiast, you enjoy the, the sounds and the performance of the turbo, then you're probably gonna want to do a modification like this. Again, you know, not going to argue the science between cold air and hot air intake, but but that sound, oh, that's what makes turbos fun. That sound right there. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are able to. Do this yourselves if you have a 2022 Santa Cruz with the 2.5 liter turbo motor. Uh, it took me about 30 minutes altogether, uh, as you'll see, if, you know, without the mistakes and knowing what you're doing and having the right tools, probably could have done that a little bit more quickly. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Have any questions? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. Thanks again for watching.